Hey gang, this is Doc, DocsDetecting.com. I have actually had some of my really good friends threaten me with death if I don't hurry up and tell you about the Dallas rod. Detector airlift assist system. There's the rod and there's the strap. Um, the rod is complete. The rod will function. I'm going to show you how it will function with things that you already use uh, without any modifications to your rig. And then uh, I'll show you how to use it with the strap, which is an option. It's not necessarily, I'm not quite sure the way the strap is going to work yet. I think it's going to be one of those things where you're going to decide how to best attach it to yourself. But the first thing uh, let's go into, it's let's go into the parts that you will receive with the Dallas rod. The first thing you're going to receive is, this is what's called the upper strut, and it has the bungee connection ring. So this is where your bungee will snap onto. It has a threaded bottom, female threaded bottom. Okay, the next thing is the lower strut. This lower strut actually threads into the upper strut and allows for you to adjust this up and down, depending on how high you are. And this is critical because you need this not to bump into whatever is holding it close to your shoulder. If it bumps into your backpack, your uh, slip click uh, clip that I'm going to show you in a minute, the slide clip, um, it's going to transfer the weight to your shoulder and that's not what we want this to do. We want this to direct the weight of the detector back to the back of your pants. All right, so upper rod where you connect your bungee, okay, the lower strut, okay, which goes into this paddle. Now you've all seen if, you, if you're carry a, a concealed weapon, uh, you've all seen paddle holsters. They're extremely comfortable. The nice thing about this is the lower strut just screws into it and it helps you adjust the width of this. So if you're a big guy, you can adjust it out here. If you're a smaller guy, you can adjust it in. We want to keep this relatively close to your ribs. Okay, the reason being is because that way your arm doesn't bump into it and it's not annoying for you. All right. The other thing that you're going to get, and this thing is absolutely critical if you're using your own hydration pack or your own bungee cord, is this slide clip, okay? This will snap on to whatever you're using, all right? And it allows this to slide up and down. And that's, again, very, very important. I can't express how uh, important that is because if you've got it like this, you're not gonna get the benefit of, of this particular item, okay? It needs to be able to move up and down freely so the weight is redirected and transferred to the back of your pants where you're not going to feel it because all it's going to do is push your belt out. All right, the other thing that you're going to get is the Quipple bungee. All right, the Quipple bungee is something that I recently redefined. We had the Quiggle bungee. Now we've updated it with the Quipple bungee because it makes things really easy to adjust your detector. This alone, we sell this alone for $30. Um, and that comes with it. The other thing you're going to get is you're going to get a little parts package. Okay, so little parts package has four stainless steel screws in it. It has a little Phillips screwdriver. It also has a drill bit, so you'll drill the exact size hole that you need. This upper strut where you attach your bungee, it has two little guide holes. And the purpose of that is, so once you get this adjusted to the proper height, okay, you can tap those holes, Put your two stainless steel screws in and then we give you two more stainless steel screws because it depends on you okay if you want this to be free swinging okay so when you bend over all right you can leave this just the way it is just screw it in if you want to lock it into place okay you can do that as well hey gang this is a little breakaway from the video I was doing. Yesterday I was explaining how to put the Dallas rod together and there's one thing that I neglected to tell you that's really important for the final adjustment on this. Um, as I said, when you screw your bottom strut into the paddle, you can leave it free swinging, okay? You don't have to secure it with the two little stainless screws. I would advise that you do secure it 
And I'll tell you why, because what happens is even though this is going to be hooked to your backpack or your hydration pack, the weight of the detector is going to pull this forward when it's free swinging. All right. So what you want to do with the weight of the detector on it, make sure you've got the weight of the detector on it. And you're going to need two people to do this one time just to get the adjustment right. With the weight of the detector on it, pull this back, okay, tight against your shoulder, come back here and make sure that the paddle is flat against your back. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, and have somebody mark it, okay, with a little, have, the, have them mark it right across where it screws in at from the lower strut onto the paddle. Okay, now when you take it off, okay, you can see this one, I've had this one marked. All right, have somebody mark that with a, with a marker, a little felt tip. All right, now adjust this correctly. You might even want to come back maybe just an eighth of an inch and put, drill these two holes and put those two stainless steel screws in here. What that keeps us from doing is coming forward too far because when you rotate here, I mean, it's a nice idea to have this rotate and move with you, but the fact of the matter is it also gives your detector the ability to swing forward and you can lose the effectiveness of this transferring the weight correctly because if it gets too far forward, it's, it's, it's just pulling down. It's not transferring the weight to the back of your pants. So you want to actually fix this so it does not rotate with those two screws. And uh, you will get some forward movement, but forward movement will be just perfect so it is in fact still pushing um, against the back of your pants and transferring the weight properly. So I wanted to break in to this and tell you how important that adjustment is and that you need two people to do it. Make sure you've got the detector on it, Make sure you hold it flat against your shoulder, okay, with the weight of the detector. Have somebody mark the back of it with a felt tip pen, the lower strut, and over to the paddle so you can align those two lines. And then when you take it off, drill two holes and put the little stainless steel screws in there and you'll be all set. That way it doesn't, it doesn't have the ability to move that far forward if it's free swinging, all right? And it does not bother me because the beam that you have the slide clip, okay? The slide clip allows this to move when you bend over or whatever you're going to do. I mean, this thing moves with you. So it's not going to impede your movement at all. All right, back to the original video. Just put two screws back here where it screws in and it'll lock it into place in the paddle. I've done that. I think it's comfortable. It doesn't bother me at all. Other important thing I want to tell you about this lower strut is this threaded, male threaded area is six and a half inches. This one is six inches. So let's say you little, need a little more height. It's fine. Just flip it around. It'll give you a little more height. It will go in either way. All right. But the way it was designed originally is the six and a half inch goes in here. Once you get this all adjusted the way you want it, there's nothing wrong with cutting any excess off if you don't desire to have the excess, if it bothers you. It doesn't bother me at all. Same thing with this. You can trim about, if you need this shorter, which I don't think you will, I think you'll probably need it higher. If you need this a little shorter, you can trim off a little bit of this um, and cut it off and then screw it in. All right, what are you going to have to supply? Well, you're gonna have to supply a power drill, of course, to make your little tap holes, all right? And I would suggest you get some electrical tape all right, the need to be electrical tape. You could use duct tape for any that reason. The only reason being is because when you're working to adjust this, okay, we don't want to put the screws in it yet. We want to make sure you get this adjusted properly for the height you need it, okay? And so when you think you've got it adjusted properly, then you can tape it, okay? And say, okay, well, this is good. The other thing you're going to need is whatever detector you're using. That's really important, okay, because the way this sits on you and the height is going to be determined by the weight of the detector because this may be fine, okay, when you're, you know, not got any weight on it, but when you put weight on it, it's going to pull it forward and push back. So you want to make sure, you know, it may look good here without any weight on it and your slip clip 
uh, slide clip may be right here, but as soon as you put weight on it, it comes up here and it's banging into the connection ring, the bungee connection ring, and now you've defeated the purpose of this completely. So those are the things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a drill, you're gonna need some tape to do some temporary fixation of this when you're playing around with it to see where you need it. And then you're gonna use your metal detector because you want to only adjust this and put screws in it and fix it in where you need that adjustment at once you put weight on your rig, okay? So once you put weight on that Dallas, that's what we want to look at and see where it goes. Okay, so I want to show you, this is my rod that I've already adjusted for me. And if you look right here, you can see that I've put my two stainless steel screws in here. I've also put two stainless steel screws in here, which prevents this from rotating forward too much. I also have the slide clip, right? As I said, this slide clip is critical. It is the thing that allows you to use your rig, so this complements whatever it is that you wear. You may wear a hydration pack. Um, you may wear a little um, backpack that you like. And the last thing in the world you want is to have to put another backpack or a harness over the top of the things that you like to use. Um, a lot of guys are minimalists. They don't want all that stuff. So let me show you, let, let me use this hydration pack as an example. All right, so you put the hydration pack on, if that's what you're wearing, and um, this, you slip in the back of your pants, All right, this comes up here, all right. You want that slide clip to attach someplace, all right. You can see right now, okay, this looks pretty good, right? But I can tell you this needs to be adjusted higher because if I put a lot of weight on this, a lot of weight like with the GPZ 7000, it may come down and bump into this slide clip. But you can see this works perfectly with whatever rig you have. You just have to make sure this is high enough. That's why I tell you, make sure you test this with your metal detector. I'm gonna come back in a few minutes and we'll talk about attaching the Quipple bungee to your detector and how that works and how it makes your life a lot easier. But right now, let me show you what happens when I attach the GPZ 7000 to this and you'll see how it, it makes a difference and why you absolutely need to uh, put weight on this rig. Okay, so I'm gonna step over here and so here I am and I'm gonna take my Drop my saga, which uh, as you can see, it didn't break when I dropped it, like some swing arms that we know about. All right, so take the quipple bungee. Just trying to hook it to everything but where it's supposed to go. Clip it on here, okay? You can make your gross adjustment down here. Just tug it up in there. Then you make your fine adjustment right here. Okay, so. There you go. Look at that. Look at. There's nothing to it. Okay, this takes all the weight off. This is about as good a rig as I could figure out. And I've been working on this for four years. I've taken a look at all the crazy contraptions that have been out there that have been so-so. They've been really good attempts, but I wanted something that would work perfectly and work without having something additional on you. You can use this with whatever you're wearing. So if you're using a regular harness, that's fine. We're also going to try to supply you with an O-ring with a piece of webbing. So if you have a harness or you have a backpack that you like but it doesn't have an O-ring, we'll give you an O-ring that you can stitch on. Again, the, the position of that o-ring is going to be really important because you want to be cognizant of this slip clip and where it's going to attach. But as you can see, this makes life so much easier. I could swing this all day long. And what it's doing is it's pushing out and back. This, you can see the weight is directed backwards. It's not directed down. 
so it pushes your pants down, okay? I've got nothing to hold my pants up, okay? But because this doesn't push down on your pants, it's not necessary to have suspenders. I mean, I sort of like suspenders when I'm out because I've got a pick hanging on me and all that other kind of stuff. But this just makes life so much easier. And if you really want to make life easier, get the Saga swing arm. It's a swing assist guide arm. And the reason we call it a guide arm is because look at this. Okay, remember how you used to have to, when you wanted to check the side, you'd you do this whole thing about bending your whole body because you had to counteract the weight of your detector. I mean, this is a very heavy detector, the GPZ 7000. And when you're trying to do this on a ridge, that's heavy. When you use the Saga swing arm, you just twist the handle. It's like a joystick for your metal detector. So you add these items together and you've got a really comfortable rig that's going to allow you to detect for hours and hours. And believe me when I tell you, will you find more gold? Yeah, you know why? Because the biggest problem with finding gold is that we get tired, we get fatigued, we lose concentration. All of a sudden, we're guessing at what targets are. Isn't it amazing how when you start off the day, it's like you're digging every target, okay? Because we don't know what it is. This doesn't have discrimination. Most pulse inductions don't have discrimination. Towards the end of the day, it's all of a sudden we're going over and you go, yeah, that sounds like a bullet. I'm not digging that because we get tired and we get careless. And so we miss gold. So anyway, this is going to make your life a whole lot easier. I'm going to go now and explain to you how to hook the Quipple bungee up and what that's going to do for you in terms of making your life simple. All right. Thanks. Okay, guys, I want to talk about the Quipple bungee. This is another one of those things that I've worked on for a long time, and I've looked at other iterations, and uh, mine might have had a really good clip that I sort of took some clues from. I think they took some clues from some of the clips that I had designed previously, which had a V-groove in it to lock the adjustment of the bungee in. The first thing on this Quipple bungee system is the rod attachment, okay, right here. This goes around any rod. As you can see, it's it's got a velcro webbing type system it also on the inside has a piece of velcro that you can take off that has an adhesive back i would advise when you first put this on take that velcro off leave the adhesive back in place okay and you want to decide where you want this do you want it up or down the rod do you want it to the right do you want it to the left I'm right-handed, so I'm going to do my adjustments with my left hand. That means I sort of like this tilted a little to the left because I can adjust the, the bungee easily that way. So I would suggest first just put it on, play with it for a while. The other thing is it's critical that when you put the bungee on this, and this bungee goes in easily, easily attaches because it's got a little slide groove right in the side that you can put that bungee right in the side, pops right in. Okay. When you, when you first do this, okay, take your bungee off of whatever you've got it attached to and lock it in here at the top on the hook, okay, and then hang it. Don't let it slam into the ground, but hang it like this and make sure that you've got it balanced. You see that? Because that's the way you're going to detect. You don't want it front heavy because if you've got it here, guess what? It's going to be back heavy. So what's that mean? Well, that means you're going to have to roll your shoulder forward to keep the coil on the ground. And if it's way too far back, it's going to be front heavy. And if it's front heavy, you're going to be doing this with your elbow all day long to keep that coil up because it's slamming into the ground. So you want it perfectly balanced like this. You want it to mimic what it's going to look like when you're detecting. Okay, I'm going to show you how to adjust the bungee, the Quipple bungee, so it makes your life easy. First of all, right here, as we explained, this is where you can adjust this very easily to do your gross adjustment. You just lift your detector up and down. When you find out where approximately you want it, just tug it up into the groove. If you want to remove the bungee completely, just take it out the side groove. All right, so those are the two things you do. All right, it pops right back in very easily. So what I suggest, is that you, I want to show you this as well before we get into this. Okay, this is your adjustment clip that goes on your ring, whatever ring you're using, okay? So you see the adjustment clip? It can be adjusted on either side. It makes no difference 
which end you put here and which end that you leave open because it's ambidextrous. So there's three ways you actually can adjust this. So we'll put that on here, we'll come back, and what you do, make sure I don't end up at the pool, is lift your detector up, okay, first, and grab down, and grab that bungee, pop it out of the V-groove, lift your detector up a little, and then lock it into the V-groove. Now, as you can see, it's still on the ground, so I don't have it properly adjusted, but that's great because all you got to do is come here to make your fine adjustments. All right, so you just pull down on this just like you did with the V-groove down there and raise it up and down. It's sort of like a pulley system. Okay, and once you get it to about where you think you want it, just pull it up. Now look, now my detector is just floating, okay? And it's a proper distance right off the ground. I mean, it's, it's rubbing. Okay, but it's not digging into the ground. You can hear it, obviously. Okay, so that's the beauty of this. The other beauty of this is, let's say you go start to go up a ridge. You go up a ridge, guess what's going to happen? Well, look, your bungee slack, right? Pull it down, pull it up. It's readjusted. You don't even have to break a swing. So that's the advantage. The other thing that I want to advise you of is the swing assist guide arm. Uh, this makes life so much easier because I know a lot of people have seen swing arms. This is not a swing arm. This is a guide arm. This is something that's like a joystick for your metal detector. You know what happens when you're in a gully and you're detecting a gully and now you, you want to you wanna detect the side of the gully, right? And you want to get up behind the bushes. Well, do you know how heavy this detector is? Especially, it's a brick on a stick. So your whole body, and boy, I can feel this right in through my elbow and up into my shoulder. Your whole body is counteracting the weight of this. With the guide arm, you take this little egg-shaped handle, you twist it, and you don't have to do anything. You have complete control. Okay? And it all is due to this swivel joint that I invented down here. Okay, that's what allows you to have the control. That swivel joint needs a piece of double-sided tape on it to put it in position. Um, I didn't put double-sided tape on it, but it helps a lot to flip it where you want to go. You can go overhead. You can do the side of mine walls. You can do anything you want to, and it's not going to kill you. So hopefully all this information gives you some insight into what you can do. Still working on the detector airlift assist system strap for guys who don't have any kind of a harness system, but that'll come later. I've got some ideas. I'll share them with you. And like I said, I think this is going to be one of those things where you're going to have to figure out how it works best for you. Thanks for watching guys. And thanks for your patience. Things like this do not happen overnight. It takes a while to perfect things to make them work perfectly because all my brand, my brand is called Nugget Stalker. It's a registered trademark in the United States and in Australia. I want all my Nugget Stalker brand products to be the very best things that you've ever used. Thanks a lot. I'm back, gang. DocsDetecting.com. I promised you I would show you the Dallas strap. Okay, Sort of working on it. I think it's about as close as I'm going to get, but I welcome your input as always. I wanted to make something relatively simple for you to use the Dallas rod on. If you don't have a hydration pack or you don't use a little backpack or something like that because you have to have something to attach this to. Now in this instance, I am not using the slip clip okay, right here because I'm not going to need it with the Dallas strap. But I'm going to advise you guys do not lose this. Just leave it on there. It's not going to get in the way because this is an important thing to have if you ever decide you do want to use a hydration pack or a backpack or something. This is essential because that's what attaches it. All right, so with the, the Dallas uh, strap, just put it up through the little, the little webbing strap there. Just drop that down out of the way. Bring it to your back and put it in your, in your waistband, the paddle. All right, so there you go. And that's as simple as it is. I wanted to give you something that was padded, but something was simple and not obtrusive. 
So this is what I came up with. Of course, we're going to give you plenty of webbing so you can make your adjustments. But I've actually found this is the best way to do it. Attach it here and then bring it around here. I'll show you an alternate way to do it as well. You're probably going to figure out your own way that you like it. But this works great if you don't have something and it's minimal. Okay, it's not, it's not interrupting or interfering with anything. It's not like a big heavy uh, backpack or a hot backpack. So here we go. You take your quipple bungee, you put it on, and of course, as we spoke before, you adjust it where you want it, and there you go. Okay. So the only thing I'm I'm a little leery about is that this has a tendency to pull forward more. It's still pushing the weight out back here on your belt, but I don't know what the solution is to holding this closer to you. Now, one of the things that I have thought about, and like I said, I think what's going to happen is probably my best ideas are going to come from you guys when you play with this. I'm thinking that maybe you come around here and instead of attaching this to your belt, you adjust it open this up just a bit and clip it on here okay all right see that seems to hold it better and I have a feeling that that's going to be the way that most guys prefer to do it so because it's uh, it just seems to be adjust this a little better it just seems to be not hanging out so far away from you it seems like you have a little more control of it this way but uh, like I said I'm just trying to make it simple uh, because I know you guys don't like complicated so that's the Dallas strap and like I said if you guys have any input on this I'd be happy to hear it uh, this is another one of those things that as you use this if you're going to use a strap that's why you don't want to necessarily put these screws in right away play with it and see as you see this is sort of turning outward and it has to do with the fact of, of the position of this little strap so when you put this in if you haven't put the screws in you may want to twist this upper strut and twist it inward tape it and then go ahead and drill your holes to adjust it if this is what you're going to use so this is probably something you guys could make yourself but this is the strap that i've got so far and like i said it's just uh it's an alternative if you don't have a backpack or a hydration pack or some way to attach this with the slip clip that we give you the slide clip all right bye docsdetecting.com <laughs>